Start that fire. None will stand in our way. Most recording studios are built for linear production. For recording voice, it's more like a film set. So we treat the studio like a film set, but we also take the spy analogy very, very seriously. So the control room now becomes the little support vehicle outside the embassy that James Bond is going into to get the, you know, get the papers out of the safe, you know what I mean? Anti-tank soldier, reporting for duty. Okay, you got to come rock, rookie with that, but that was okay. Mm. That was much more in the zone. You can hear instantly whether it's actually working hitting the character yet. Okay, let's go stealthy. Enemy sighted. Hostile units. Enemy. Nailed it, well done. <laughs> Stay on the floor, good, well done. Games are the new technology on the block and acting is something that has been around for thousands of years. Bringing an actor from that linear tradition into a non-linear tradition is quite difficult, you know, because the linear tradition is a very small script that is a piece of string from beginning to end and you just follow the journey. And for an actor is to grasp that journey, be that character in that journey, end of story. We, we the two of us, are going to share a bed. We don't have any time for this nonsense. As soon as you get into open worlds and big games, you're going from the tiny script to huge scripts. And we do one of the par one of the an analogies we use is that it's going from a piece of string to a map of London. Oh, they make it 3D and mash it up a bit. That's your script. That's the complexity you're dealing with. I could squish you with my left toe. And what we're doing is actually taking the character and letting them live in the world. And, you know, you get these first takes that are gloriously subtle and interesting and, and surprising because they're actually living in the moment. So you've got monsters, you've got all the movement, and then bringing in the voice with the, you know, dehumanizer. I'd have it all there. Oh, it's fantastic because, you know, what you're doing is that like you see a big monster. You're going to play this big monster. And, you know, the normal thing is, oh, yeah, we're going to post-process it. But actually, yeah, pro doing that processing in real time is amazing. Because you get, you know, actors going, yeah, I'm going to be a big monster, you know. And actually, when you put the effects on, it just changes them. They go, oh, I can be a big monster like this, and it sounds monstrous. And they can explore the subtlety and the emotion, you know. <laughs> And I love that sort of growling and the, you know, creating the environment around the monster. You know, they're just like the breathing and the movement, you know, the energy you can create, which you could never create just from a picture or an animation. You could do it, but it hasn't got the sound, the size or the level of threat. You know, I love that just the, you know, the breathing stuff it was just like, holy fuck, that's awesome. You know, but because you're taking, you know, you've got the character in the game sounding like the character in the game. Most of the frustration is like you get an actor in the studio with a director and then you give it to the audio team who then do the post-processing on it and using various techniques to create that sound, but they're actually creating it out of the sound that they're given rather than getting the two to play together, you've got that momentum that's going between the tech and the performer, which is just like, so cool, you know. I'm going to tread on you. Come out. Why don't you come out and play? Because the more you can bring, more context you can bring to the moment, the more you can connect it to the, you know, to the world that you're creating. That is the ethos of what we, you know, we do.